NSA confirms it spied on Americans. The FCC rejects Netflix's net neutrality argument. And iPhone 6 screen production might be right around the corner. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 56 for Tuesday, April 1st, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Nature Box, where you can order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like guacamole bites. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. U.S. Director of National Intelligence James Clapper has confirmed for the first time that the National Security Administration had used a backdoor in surveillance law to perform warrantless searches on Americans' communications. Back in August, The Guardian reported a secret rule change that allowed the NSA analyst to search for American details as well as foreigners within their databases. Clapper confirmed this in a letter to Senator Ron Wyden, an Oregon Democrat who's on the Intelligence Committee, but didn't disclose how many warrantless searches had been performed by the NSA thus far. Ever since content streaming service Netflix agreed to pay internet provider Comcast for direct access to its network for better access to its customers, the Federal Communications Commission hasn't specifically intervened. But at a press conference yesterday, FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler argued that while the commission doesn't see this as a net neutrality issue specifically, the government still needs to oversee how networks connect to each other. Netflix CEO Reed Hastings recently pleaded the FCC to expand its open internet order, more known as the net neutrality rules, to cover interconnection deals. The FCC's original rules were enacted in 2010 and required internet service providers to treat all traffic equally. But Comcast doesn't technically give preferential treatment to Netflix traffic. It just ensures higher quality video. The FCC is reworking its net neutrality rules because a federal court struck down the old version earlier this year. Before his legal trial has even begun, Ross Ulbricht, the alleged creator of the Silk Road Bitcoin-based black market for drugs, may try to argue that he didn't use Bitcoin for money laundering because Bitcoin does not meet the current law's definition of money. Last week, the Internal Revenue Service issued a decision stating that Bitcoins should be treated as property rather than money. In a 64-page motion filed over the past weekend, Albrecht's lawyer, Joshua Dratel, argued that along with the money, la money laundering charges, all other charges against his client should be dropped, including accusations of conspiracy to traffic in narcotics, hack computers, and run a continuing criminal enterprise. Albrecht pleaded not guilty to all of those charges in February. Supply chain sources tell Reuters that Apple suppliers, including Japan Display, Sharp, and LG Display, may begin mass-producing displays as early as May for the next iPhone, thought to be called the iPhone 6, and expected to be launched this autumn. A 4.7-inch screen would likely be produced first, while a 5.5-inch version could be delayed, according to the sources. If true, both versions of an iPhone 6 screen would be larger than the current 4.0 panel on Apple's existing iPhone 5S and 5C models. Both iPhone 6 screens are expected to use in-cell touch panel technology built into the screen and allowing for thinner construction than with standard touch panel films. We've got a decade to celebrate. Ten years ago on Thursday, April 1st, 2004, Gmail launched. Yes, it's actually been 10 years. With a storage capacity of one gigabyte, which was 500 times what Microsoft's Hotmail offered at the time, many people actually thought that this was Google's version of an April Fool's joke. Gmail's first product manager, Brian Wachowski, who still works for Google on the Android team, recalls that, quote, Sergey was most excited about it. The ultimate April Fool's joke was to launch something kind of crazy on April 1st, and have it exist on April 2nd. Coming up, if there's anything that we here at TN2 love more than selfies, it's April Fools. So later we'll introduce to you our favorite hybrid of the two. And up next, Daryl Etherington from TechCrunch will join us with a little bit of Android and a little bit of iOS news. He's been quite busy over at TechCrunch today. But first, it's easy to say that you're going to eat right. And then it's 3 p.m. and you're starving and you're cranky and your head hurts and all those good intentions go out the window. But don't give in. You can keep your eye on looking good and feeling great with Nature Box. In fact, I've got a whole box here. 
Just go to naturebox.com slash twit. You can click on the continue button. Then what you do is choose between three subscription options. Then you place your order. Once you're a member, you can select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box. Now, I kind of went for some cherry berries here. And what do we got here? Uh, chipotle maple almonds. But what's nice is you can go vegan, soy-free, gluten-conscious, lactose-free, nut-free, non-GMO. Everything that might be important to you is in there as a selection. You can also go savory, sweet, or spicy, depending on what kind of snacks you're into. Nature Box will send good-tasting snacks right to your door, free shipping anywhere in the U.S., and they're satisfying. Kettle kernels, French toast granola, chili lime pistachios. Zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial ever. Nature Box is the snack happy gift that keeps on giving. Order a three, six, or 12 month subscription for yourself or for that special somebody, for a friend, family member, somebody who likes snacking that you want to be a little healthier. I'm going to the beach, so it's time to snack smarter. Forget the vending machine, get in shape with healthy, delicious treats. Remember, get 50% off your first box. If you go to naturebox.com slash twit, stay full, stay strong, naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Naturebox for the support of Tech News Tonight. I'll get these away from me so I can uh, actually uh, have an actual conversation with Daryl Etherington, who is a writer over at TechCrunch and joining us now. Hey, Daryl. Hey, how's it going? Good. So I mentioned uh, you've been quite busy uh, today on a variety of stories. First up, uh, we've got a we've got a story that Google is said to be working on bringing blur and photo filters to Android, are we talking about specific phone models? How is this similar to what is already available for some Android models? Well, the report is early yet, so there's not really too many specifics on how many uh, devices this would affect, but I'm guessing it would be software side uh, implemented and would probably depend maybe on some of the newer processor technology that like Qualcomm was showing off at CES, that a lot of their processors, uh, the new ones, will now support these kind of effects with existing camera hardware. So HTC, as you mentioned, has similar effects on their new phone. But they use this new duo camera system to uh, distinguish the background and the foreground to make these effects possible. And I think that what Google would want to do if they were baking these directly into Android, as the report suggests, is make that more uh, hardware agnostic so that as long as you're using a newer phone with a newer, or a newer processor for a newer smartphone, you'd be able to do some of the same kind of magic. One of HTC's claims to fame really is that they make great hardware and the latest one definitely is, is going down that line. Does this take any wind out of HTC's sales for Google to be working on something that's clearly competition? No, I don't think so. I mean, Samsung also has similar features. And if you look even at beyond Android, uh, Windows Phone, Nokia has their uh, refocus app as well, which does the same thing. So I think this is just something that we're going to see become table stakes for mobile devices. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily claim any knowledge about like Apple's plans, but they, presumably they're working on something similar too. It just seems like an area that consumers are interested in. I think the, the one that really gets hit by this is not HTC or Samsung or any of these guys. It's like Lytra, which, which invented this tech with their light field camera, which is a huge boxy device that's a dedicated, you know, separate camera. That would never, ever possibly fit inside of a smartphone. That tech just doesn't work that way. So people have found alternate ways to do it. And I don't think Lytra has been included on any of these conversations um, for licensing it. So. Well, we spoke earlier in the show about a lot of uh, iPhone 6 rumors. Uh, they just keep coming. Uh, and uh, there, there's, there's, there's more to talk about in the Apple department that Apple may be looking to buy a chip designer. Tell us about this. Yeah, so this is another interesting move where we see Apple move towards owning more of its supply chain. Um, you know, normally in the past, it, it's depended on a lot of suppliers to make its products, and it's still going to do that. Um, but this most recent report suggests that it wants to buy a controlling stake in a, a manufacturer of chips for smartphone displays. So this would be the chips that control things like the resolution on your smartphone display, the uh, color contrast, color rendering, um, and just overall quality. And so the, the the manufacturer that they're actually interested in getting a stake in currently builds a third of the world supply of these chips. Um, so that would give Apple a pretty commanding advantage. And But we've seen them do things like that before. Like we've seen them cut essentially Samsung out of the design process of their chips um in the past and you know they still use them as a manufacturing partner but they took all the design of the chips in-house uh they stopped using reference designs from arm 
um, you know, off the shelf and started making their own thing. So it's it's something that Apple has been doing, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing it again. Any thoughts on how soon we would see this technology? If the if if if, if this if this chip design company does come in house, is it something that would apply to the iPhone six? I mean, I don't think so. Based on the the reports we're seeing that. You know that those production lines are already spinning up, which would make sense if we're looking at a fall launch for them to be getting started soon. Um, this deal supposedly will close uh, summer, so at, you know at the soonest beginning of summer, but at, at the latest at the end of summer. I just don't think that the window is going to be there, so probably not for iPhone six, probably for products beyond that. Last uh, last little bit of iPhone news almost sort of plays into our first story about uh, uh, Google making uh, photo filters, uh, make, making cameras, Android cameras better. Sorry, it's raining outside and that's all I can hear <laughs> right now. What about these bayonet mounts for iPhones? It sounds intriguing, but what does that actually mean? Okay, so uh, typical DSLRs or uh, mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras, they use what we call a bayonet mount to affix the lens to the camera. So when you switch right. them out, you press it and you twist it and then you know it comes off and then you put the new one in and it twists and locks and then it's firmly there in place. Um, and this is the system that Apple has patented for its iPhone. So this patent is something we've known about for a while. The application was published uh, before and Apple has patented a couple of different ways of doing something similar, but this, this time they've actually been granted it. Um, and again, that, that doesn't mean product roadmap. But for Apple, Apple patents a lot of stuff that never necessarily means that it's going to ship uh, in an actual product that hits store shelves. But this is an area where Apple has spent a lot of money and a lot of time um, in their actual products trying to distinguish themselves is on cameras. I would say they still make the best mobile camera out there. I, I mean, Nokia has put a lot of money into it too, and they, they have different advantages with their huge sensors. Um, and some Android makers are doing different things too, like HTC with this duo camera. But I still think the iPhone is the best all around camera in a mobile device. Uh, and I think Apple wants to protect that lead. So they're looking at different ways they can do that. Well, Daryl, thank you so much for joining us today. Daryl Etherington, a writer uh, based out of Toronto. I just found out that today uh, for yeah. TechCrunch. Uh, let folks know where they can follow more of your work online. Sure. Yeah, it's just uh, on TechCrunch. Um, I'm, you know, pretty often in the, the main feed there. Um, and then also just uh, on Twitter, I'm uh, Drizzled, which is a really old name, but I keep it. It's D-R-I-Z-Z-L-E-D. Love it. Thank you so much for being with us. All right. Thank you. All right. Finally, if you love it or you hate it, it doesn't really matter. The April Fool's tradition continues every year. In fact, this year, in some cases, it started yesterday. Google offered emoji icons. Gmail introduced the shareable selfie called the Shelfie. Virgin America and Nest announced a fake partnership. Samsung proudly showed off its new pigeon-powered Wi-Fi solution. iFixit claimed that it had been acquired by Apple. Roku got a watch. TechCrunch even announced CrunchCoin. The list goes on. But I think, I think my favorite is probably the Selfie Bot, a hovering drone that takes your selfies for you as you go about your day and saves your arms in the process. Yes, April Fool's Day is pretty silly, but sometimes it's fun too. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show, if you would, at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback, comments, or questions at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.